We've had our first freeze this fall and now it's time to get the garden ready for the upcoming winter. I'll be going over what to do in the garden in November, why it's so beneficial to plan our spring garden now, adding minerals, using leaves, winter veggies, and more. Adding minerals to your garden soil should be done in the fall time or early winter. By adding it at that time, this allows enough time for the microbes to break down those minerals, making it readily available for the plants come springtime. Minerals improve the flavor of fruits and vegetables, and it also helps reduce pests and disease. General application for most minerals is five pounds per hundred square foot, but some are more concentrated than others, so be sure that you read your labels before you apply. I like to just sprinkle it over the surface and work it in within the top three inches of the soil. A couple of my favorite minerals are green sand and Gaia Glacier rock dust. You can also use azomite if you have acidic soil, but it's really not recommended for alkali soil. Asparagus crowns shouldn't be cut back until they've gone completely yellow or brown. This patch here still has quite a bit of green in it, and if I were to cut it back now, then that can damage the crowns, which is what grows underground. So I need to wait a couple of weeks until it's completely yellow or gone brown. And at that point, I'll cut them back to about two inches above ground level. And then I'm gonna mulch it heavily with some leaves, some shredded leaves. That way that protects those crowns through the winter time. Now asparagus is really easy to care for because I don't need to water it through the winter months because it's completely hardy, whether we get rain or not. I got most of my garlic in a few days ago on a full moon and it's already starting to come up and this is a really good sign. But now it's time to start mulching my garlic to protect it, to keep it from heaving up. Heaving up is just when the ground freezes really hard and it pushes those clothes up out of the ground and that can damage that garlic. The mulch that I'm gonna be using for my garlic is just some shredded leaves that I shredded with my lawn mower. And I'll be applying this about two to three inches thick. But you can use any type of mulch, even compost. Grass clippings work great as long as they're dry and they didn't come from a lawn that had any herbicide used. Because that herbicide can reside in those grass clippings and cause damage to your plants as well as your soil. Not only does that mulch help protect the soil and those cloves, it also helps keep moisture in. In our zone A climate, we tend to be really dry through the winter time. So that'll just help me to where I don't have to water quite as often through the winter months. Now a note on grass clippings and robbing nitrogen from the soil. When you use it on the surface, that just doesn't happen. When you do incorporate it into the soil, then it does suspend the nitrogen for a few weeks while the microbes are doing their job to break down that grass clipping, turning it into nitrogen, making it available for the plants. Brussels sprouts don't do well in our climate in the springtime, but they do excellent when planted in the fall time. A lot of people like to remove those lower leaves of Brussels sprouts, but I found it really doesn't matter because they naturally turn yellow and then I'll remove those. I do like to stake my Brussels sprouts early. This keeps them upright and off the ground. Plus, I can plant them a lot closer. I can plant a lot more in a smaller amount of space. When I planted my Brussels sprouts, I added plenty of compost and a nitrogen fertilizer because they're a heavy feeder, they're a brassica crop. And at this point, I'm just gonna be mulching. I don't need to fertilize anymore. That mulch is gonna keep that soil evenly moist, which is what Brussels sprouts like. And I'll be using the shredded leaves once again. Brussels sprouts are quite a hardy winter vegetable. They're hardy down to about 20 degrees. If you get a little bit colder, then a frost blanket will protect those through those winter months. The frost actually enhances the flavor of those Brussels sprouts. If you don't receive any rainfall while your Brussels sprouts are growing, then be sure to give them a drink, maybe once a week, or just when your soil just starts to dry out. Another thing that people like to do is top the Brussels sprouts. And this isn't recommended for fall grown and winter grown Brussels sprouts because that top actually protects the lower part of the Brussels sprouts, but it's fine to do in the springtime. Now what's really nice about fall grown Brussels sprouts is you don't have the aphids like you do when they're planted in the spring. Quince is one of our fruits that come on in the late fall. It's enhanced by a good frost. It just makes that flavor just that much sweeter. It is impalatable when eaten raw, but it's excellent when it's cooked and made into chutneys and it's traditional for Thanksgiving time. 
Persimmons is another one of our fall fruits that we grow here and they usually ripen the first week in November. And this tree is absolutely spectacular when all of the leaves drop because you have all of this beautiful orange fruit that just shows and it's so fall-like. This particular variety here is the Fuyu persimmon. And they're nice and flat and best eaten when they're crisp and full color. And when you harvest these, you wanna use some nippers because they don't pull off very well. I love these because we freeze dry them or dry them. We'll slice them really thin and they make a great fruit chip. There's another variety of persimmons and it's called the Hachia. This one has kind of given persimmons flavor a little bit of a bad rap because it's tongue numbing, it's an astringent, and it's best when it's harvested when it's really soft and darkened in color. But this one's really best used for cooking. Persimmon trees are really easy to grow, kind of like the quince. There's minimal pruning, and there really is virtually no pests or disease that bother it, at least in our area. Well, except for the starlings. Now when that fruit is ripe, they will come in and wipe that fruit out in literally one day. When our broccoli and cauliflower heads begin to mature, we really need to watch the forecast. If our temperatures drop below 28 degrees and the heads are nice and mature, then this can damage them and ruin those heads. So it's either a good idea to harvest them or use a frost blanket just to protect them. When leaves start to fall, they become the gardener's best friend. You can use them to make leaf mold, put them in your compost pile, or to use them as a mulch in your garden to protect your crops through the winter months. Leaves are a great organic material that you can add to your soil to help break up clay soil, to add tilth to the soil. It also helps hold moisture in in sandy soils and it feeds the microbes. And one of the best things are is they're free. I like to break my leaves up or kind of shred them with a lawn mower because when you use them whole, especially as a mulch, then they kind of act as a watershed. When they're layered like that, the water just repels right off of them. And when they're broke up, the water has a tendency to find its way better through those leaves. This is one of my leaf bins here that I started almost a year ago and you can see how these leaves still just look like leaves. They haven't broke down all the way. Had I had broken these down, shredded them, they would have been more broke down like this right here. I really love to use shredded leaves as a mulch through the winter months to protect my soil from the harsh conditions like the sun and the wind. I'll use this around leeks, garlic, and Brussels sprouts or anything else that I'm growing. After I apply my leaf mulch, I like to water it in because watering it just kind of helps those leaves stick together just a little bit and helps them stay in their place when the wind blows. And we have wind here. Fennel is one of my favorite pollinator friendly plants that I have in the garden. Not only is it heavily pollinator friendly, but it's also edible and it has a lot of health benefits. The fennel that I'm growing here is Florence fennel. It's also known as sweet fennel. It produces a bulb and the bulb grows above ground. I get two harvests out of it, one in the springtime and one again in the fall. Any of the bulbs that I don't harvest, they send up a stalk and they grow really rapidly and form a flower head on it. And that flower head attracts the beneficial insects, which is awesome. And it also will go to seed and that seed you can harvest and collect and use for culinary uses. Swallowtails really love to feed on the fronds of the fennel and once it flowers, goes to seed, then it just naturally dies back. I'll cut it back and then it'll start to regrow again and that's when you get your second harvest in the fall time of your fennel bulb. Fennel is a hardy perennial here in our zone A. It has deep tap roots, it prefers full sun, it does like nice rich soil that's well drained. But honestly, it'll grow just about anywhere and it's drought tolerant. The bulbs, leaves, and seeds are all used in culinary uses. They have that sweet licorice flavor and smell. One of my favorite ways to use fennel is to roast them with carrots. I'll slice the fennel really thinly, lay them out on a pan with the carrots, sprinkle them with olive oil, salt, and pepper, and roast them until they're caramelized. Really delicious. The licorice flavored fronds are excellent used when cooked with pork or even chopped up really fine and used in egg salad. Not only does fennel have great culinary uses, but it's also an antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, and antioxidant. The seeds are also used to curb appetites and to soothe tummy aches when used as a tea. 
On a historical note, fiddle was used for poisonous mushrooms, snake bites, and the root was used for the bites of mad dogs. I wonder if it works for mad cats. After a freeze, the garden requires a lot of work. A few days ago, this garden was green, lush, and very overgrown, and now it's like a blank slate. I love this time of year, even though it is a lot of work, probably more work than any other time of year in the garden, it's like a renewal. And this is what I like to plan for next year's garden. By planning next year's garden now, we'll improve your garden in the springtime. Plus you have the winter time to make little tweaks. This is when the garden is fresh in your mind. What did well, what didn't, and where you planted everything. Maybe you planted too many pepper plants and you don't wanna plant that many next year, or you didn't have enough tomatoes for canning. This is when it's really fresh in your mind and you won't forget. If you didn't record or journal your garden, now's the time to do so, because crop rotation is really important and three-year crop rotation is best. You don't wanna be planting heavy feeder crops in the same place year after year. Heavy feeder crops use up a lot of the nutrients in the soil, and some examples of that are corn, brassica crops, and cucumbers. I like to follow up crops after those heavy feeders, like peas or lettuces, and peas are excellent to help add nutrients back into that soil. Don't forget to leave a little space in your garden to try something new, or maybe something your friend told you about that you wanted to try but didn't have room for it. Make a note of that so you don't forget. Planning your garden now will set you up for success the next growing season. We'll see you in our next video. Why it's so beneficial, yeah, get it out of your way, <laughs> is nung, nung tummy, because it's tongue numbing. Yeah, tongue numbing. Don't you put that in there. <laughs> because it is tongue numbing and it's the ravens. <laughs> it's the starlings. <laughs> Leech punch. Yeah, um, what was that? Now, I don't want that. Now. Wrong one. Why it's so beneficial to uh, that the soil freezes and it pushes. Did I say that already? Mm -hmm. They're best wheaten. They are. I don't talk like this. Do I? Do I talk like this? Nope. Only when the camera's on. I know. Okay.